Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to today's Bite Size. I'm Franziska Brunat, and uh, I'm the host for today. With us is Edmund Miller, and he is going to give us his impressions of working with NF Test. Okay. Good morning, everybody. Um, I did not, I just wanted, before we start, I did not write NF Test. I've just been using it. Um, it was actually written by Lucas Forer and Sebastian Schoner. I'm going to butcher that, um, from IMED. Okay, so what is an F-test? Um, it is basically the ability to write unit tests for NextFlow workflows, which I looked at Phil's talk, is the second most requested feature in this year's NextFlow and NFCore community survey. So you can think of it as PyTest, but for NextFlow, if you're familiar with Python or unit test, um, basically just a way to to write <clears throat> either full pipeline tests or sub workflow function tests and um, module tests and we'll get into some of those um so what that kind of looks like so if you haven't memorized the hello in it or the hello next flow script here's a quick reminder um, we start saying all of these different greetings in different languages and we pipe them through and then we view it lastly and so what that looks like on the NF test side is then we have a name of the test, this spoiler plate up here, and then we have a script and we're actually calling, I believe the remote script here. Um, and then a name of the test on this line. And then we have what we expect, such as the success of it, how many tasks we're gonna have, which I think is also important as you're changing things. Um, and then we have several certs of like what's happening in the standard out of these greetings, for example. And that's kind of the power of what you can do with NF test here. Um, and you, I'll let your imagination kind of run wild with that of all the things you can do with it from there. So a little bit of background as to why we want this and like if you're not sold yet um, on that. So, so far our testing practices until now have been testing our pipelines with GitHub Actions and then testing our modules with PyTest workflow that's running on GitHub Actions um, for those. So with the pipelines and GitHub Actions, I've realized I was talking to Satish as we were starting to play around with NFTest that CI is meant to run your test framework not be your test framework. Um, and I think that's kind of rung true of all that it's doing really is it's just checking that the workflow ran without failing. And that's a huge step up from not checking anything um, but then that starts to create several problems as well when we're doing that, such as a number of the tests. Um, whenever that starts to go up, it starts to become more complicated to maintain. You start coming up with all these fancy matrices, things start breaking. Um, it's hard to keep track of what's going on in, in the jobs per se. Um, and you can see Sarek as a example of that and all of the various tests that they had and, and all of these and trying to maintain their huge pipeline. Um, <clears throat> and so running the test locally then and repeating those as well um, in a fashion, you had to really translate from that workflow YAML and then convert it to a next flow command and then run those. And then if you wanted to run multiple tests, you had to do that a couple of times. Um, this also had a heavy reliance on CI runners as well for us. produce those um, rather than us using the CI test or the CI runners as a check and a um, settlement of an argument of whose computer it runs on correctly. So um, in our modules, we've been using PyTest workflow. If you're familiar with that, I'm sure if you've contributed, you've fought with PyTest workflow at some point. Um, so running your test should be as easy as running your pipeline. PyTest workflow, however, was not. Um, and so we created NF core modules test. Um, and that's a great utility. And it's been a great way for people to test things locally and rerun them. Um, it's a lot to maintain on our side and, and change and, and update and uh, kind of keeps us from wanting to progress forward on those. And want, we want to keep the infrastructure the same so that we can focus on actually writing the next flow modules. Um, 
there's a couple problems though with PyTest workflow. Um, as great as it's been, I, I've I've loved it, and it's been a huge step up from nothing. Um, and being able to actually specify tests and lay them out. The issue is that we have no native support for Nextflow profiles, um, which is kind of a real power of Nextflow. So we can't multiplex Docker Singularity Conda. And yes, we've come up with several hacks to get around that in CI and locally, um, but it's really difficult to reproduce locally and explain to new users of like, okay, well, Nextflow lets you do dash profile, but then here you have to specify it before the workflow. And it, like, it's a lot of caveats for a new, for a new user and a new contributor. Um, whereas NF test allows you to just do dash profile, just like, um, Nextflow would. And so that kind of lets you, it's, it's a lot easier for new users to say, okay, I want to test with Docker and it, and you jump right off to that. There's not as many gotchas. Um, and then the other issue that I really had with PyTest workflow was the pipeline output was tough to find locally. You had to go dig through temp. The directory changed every time. Um, you can really go figure out where your output was for your Nextflow workflow. Um, and so we wanted to convert PyTest workflow or convert all the CI to PyTest workflow. Um, and why were we putting that off across the board? Um, we had done it and a few places and Sarek had done it in all of their tests as well and done lots of extensive work but it was a lot of manual work to get all the md5 sums for the files that we wanted and the testing kind of stopped there of you can test for all the files and you can test for md5 sums and you can do contains and other stuff as well with PyTest workflow um, but it was a lot of manual work to get all those there or we can then build out new infrastructure like we did for the for the uh next flow or the nf core modules and start to build out all of that and create this um like box ourselves back into a corner as well for this rather than just kind of relying on a different framework to do that um and then the other big complaint that i had as well for pytest workflow for pipelines was i could never get local modules working with the bin um, properly for the mocks that I wrote. Whereas with NF test, it just works out of the box. Um, so after all of that, now a quick intro to NF test. Um, so all that you need to do to get started is a simple curl, which if you've installed Nextflow at this point, you're pretty familiar with. Um, it's also Java based and Groovy based. Um, on those and kind of runs with Nextflow. And we're hoping to have the NF test folks back on for a um, for more in-depth um, technical talk on this. We just wanted to get started on it. So the next command that you'll run is NF test init. And this just sets up the testing config for you and creates a testing directory and a default test config. And you can play around with those. We haven't come up with the perfect best practice yet for what we want for the NF core standard to be on that. Um, and then the next thing that I think is really, really powerful is they already have a generate command. So you can generate all of these tests for your pipeline, workflows, processes, and also really importantly that I haven't really gotten full, like we haven't tested to the full ability is functions. Um, lastly, and I think that'll really start to change things, especially as we are starting to change to check checking our sample sheet with Groovy, for example, that might help us kind of specify those and, and lock some of that down. And then lastly, you just have to run NF test um, after writing all of those tests. So that'll just generate all of the boilerplate that you need for basic smoke tests of all the um, processes, workflows, functions, et cetera. Um, and so a quick little walkthrough of some code. So this is just a quick test that I wrote in demultiplex. Um, and I don't think the highlighting is working yet. Oh, no, there we go. Um, and so what's really cool here is we can start to specify params. So if you've gone through and done this in your in your workflows and thrown it into GitHub Actions um, and thrown this into a matrix, you know, you kind of start to feel limited after you get to like one or two, or you start to really specify out like an entire test. And it, it's just not very uh, familiar. I believe you can parameterize these as well. Um, so you can change your inputs um, and change various params for your workflow. 
Um, and then this is just some boilerplate. So it boxes each workflow into its own separate um, execution directory, I believe. Phil and I have had some uh, interesting findings with that. Um, again, you can check the size. Now, this is the really powerful part here is this snapshot um, feature. And so what this does is it basically pulls in the MD5 sums for you of all of these files. So we have things like metrics, the run manifest here. We have our fast queues um, that are zipped up. And you can specify all these different paths. This actually isn't a perfect example, even because you can just list a directory um, is what I found really powerful. So you can just kind of point it there, and then it'll just go through all the files. Um, and what that then looks like over here is then you get this snapshot file. And what this does is it just creates a quick little snapshot with the MD5 sums of them um, of all those files that you specified. And you can do standard out, standard error, et cetera, as well um, on those based on the workflow. But we found that to be a little hairy for right now on those. Um, but as you can see, this is automated. And then whenever you rerun your test, it checks for these MD5 sums and we'll tell you. But the other thing is it's really easy when you're like, okay, well, I know I changed some stuff. I know these are going to change. You just run it with the update snapshots flag and it updates all the snapshots for you automatically. And then you just commit this file and it will check again against them. And if we can go back this and then for files that you can't md5 some you can also assert these files and check that they exist as well um, on them and so that's that's one thing and then there's lots of other powerful features as well um, you can do regexes um, and then you can also check for you can also start to build plugins for it such as like checking for fasta files um, i think there's plans for like a vcf checker as well um, and that kind of stuff. So I think that'll be really cool to see what comes out of that. Um, okay, so let's talk about some good testing practices as well as we start to adopt this um, and start to adopt more testing. Um, I know we already have great testing practices in the um, in the NF Core tools. So there's things like test-driven development, and that's where you write your test first, and then you write your code after. Um, there's also acceptance driven test driven development and then so that's where you start to write your acceptance criteria first and then you write your tests and then you do your development and there's behavior driven development and that's where you start to kind of talk to the team first and then you kind of go through those and start to write your tests and then you start to do your development after that and then there's also pair programming which is kind of where you write the code, someone else writes the tests, you come together and work on it together. And then lastly, just kidding, we're not gonna talk about any of those today. Um, those are all great and lots of great things that you should go read about. But I think as a community, we have more important things to focus on as well. So what are some realistic testing priorities? Um, so we should probably first convert our CI tests to pipeline tests. Um, I think those are great to reproduce locally and quickly. Next, we can then add more pipeline tests for various params and pathways that you might um, make, want to make sure don't break. Um, of like right now, I think most people are just testing that all their liners work and then hoping that everything downstream works. Um, whereas you might want to check all of your skips, for example, and make sure that you get the right amount of processes and that certain things aren't getting ran. Um, and then another great practice that I hope that we can adopt is to add tests when fixing bugs um, in PRs that prove that this bug is fixed and we're not going to come back to this bug um, and checking for it in the future so that we don't end up recreating it. Um, and then lastly, I think testing your local modules can go a long way. I think we have a lot of custom scripts that we could check that we could do some tests on and make sure that we get we're getting the expected output out of those um, to verify our scientific results. So the TLDR is let's avoid regressions um, and move forward with our tests. So um, a couple of us have been kind of like toying around with what a rollout plan could look like. This is just a quick update on this and is no way indicative of exactly what's going to happen. Um, so first, we want to start with pipelines as a proving ground, because I think that's where we had the most ground to gain on this um, as compared to being stuck with just GitHub Actions. 
So it's already in Methylseq and Demultiplex. If you're looking for some quick examples um, and you want to like implement this today and switch those over, just that step one. Um, and then we're going to need to update the template. I've got a PR starter for that, but we kind of need to settle on some like best practices or how we want to do things um, so that as you switch between NF core pipelines and contributing, uh, things are familiar. And then we need to do some module infrastructure prep and figure out how we can how we can convert those and run all these tests and what that's going to look like. We're kind of waiting for them to come out with tags for NF test. Um, and then we'll update the modules as they get changes, hopefully, um, on those. And that will kind of be a rollout. As you make a change to a module, you'll update the, the test from PyTest workflow to NF test. And then a final push to convert all the modules that didn't get any love um, at a hackathon, possibly. And with that, I'll take any questions. Um, thank you very much. Um, I am now allowing people to unmute themselves, also to start their videos. Uh, really nice talk. Are there any questions in the audience? I don't see anything. Uh, is there any logo for an F-test? <laughs> I don't think so. You should make an issue for it. No logo that that can't be, that can't stand. Yes, no, definitely logo stickers. Yes, Marcel, you're right. I want stickers as well. <laughs> uh, okay, but if there are no other questions, then uh, thank you again, Edmund, and I would also like to thank the Chan Zuckerberg Initiative as usual for um, uh, funding these talks. And if you have any questions, you can always go to Slack. Uh, ask your questions there. I guess for this one, it would be in the general help uh, channel. If you have uh, questions about NF test or about any kind of testing um, question. So thank you again. <laughs>